tell me if you felt the need to wear a winter hat indoors because your barber was sick in the middle of a pandemic would you match that with a knitted sweater i'm asking for a friend Welcome back to Hootie Style Channel. Yes, I do need a haircut, but since we got that out of the way, let's just get straight to the point. Because in this episode, we're going to talk about what hardware you need to build your very own smart mirror. Let's start with basics first and how a smart mirror works. Because it's really nothing but an illusion. An illusion of a mirror that can display information. In reality though, is just a normal display covered with a highly reflective glass. Let me show you how it works. For the sake of simplicity, I'm using a piece of paper here instead of the reflective glass. So use your imagination. As long as you keep a black background on your display, the glass will look like a mirror. And whatever bright graphic you push through on your display will look like it's displayed on the glass. So basically, what you need is a display, reflective glass, plexiglass, or normal glass covered with reflective film, a computer to run the software, and something to use as a frame. Let's dive into the display. There are some important things here to consider before deciding on a purchase. Naturally, you want a really bright display because you want your information to shine, shine bright like a diamond. But also, you want the highest contrast you can find. This is not super important in case you're building a mirror that has the same size as your display, but if you want a larger size mirror than your display, then this becomes absolutely crucial to maintain the illusion. Let's go back to our example. On the left, we have an iPhone with an edge-lit LCD display. And on the right, we have an Xperia phone with an OLED display. Turning down the lights will illustrate what I'm talking about. The reason you want a super contrasty display is that most displays have some type of background brightness and they simply cannot display a true black. You think you're looking at a black screen until you start comparing it to a darker black surface. When your mirror is the same size as your display, this won't be so noticeable in a bright room but in a dimmed down room, you might still notice. However, if the mirror is larger than the display, you will clearly see the borders and see that there is a display behind the glass because of the glow and this will ruin the illusion. Using a high contrast display, this problem will be less obvious or almost non-existing like here with an OLED display. So to summarize, if you're building a same size mirror, as your display, you can get away with most displays. Just make sure they are bright enough to shine through in a readable way, even in daylight. But if you're building a mirror larger than your display and you want to keep it looking stunning and premium, you're going to need either an OLED or a backlit LCD, like an FALD or mini LED. These types of displays are usually more expensive, as you might guess, but prices are falling as new technologies emerge. In a few years, micro LED will probably be the best display for the job, as it is both very bright and can turn each pixel off individually, just like OLED. To keep this video somewhat concise though, I'm not going to get deeper into display tech. If you really want me to make an in-depth video about that, let me know in the comments. When it comes to the glass, you should know that Glass, and I mean real glass, will always look more premium than plastic because plastic easily scratches and can be somewhat wobbly in larger formats. Reflective film on glass works well, but you might still see some bubbles under the glass and scratches are inevitable. My recommendation is that you contact your local glass cutter and ask for quality reflective glass. You're looking for somewhere between 65 to 80% reflectiveness. The higher the reflectiveness, the brighter your display needs to be. Keep that in mind. However, if it's not reflective enough, you'll be able to see the structures behind the glass, and that is not what you want. When it comes to thickness, 
don't go thicker than you need in relation to the size of your mirror. The reason is that you'll get internal reflections in thicker glass, which causes double image at close range. And also, the light will have to travel through more mass, making your mirror appear more dim. So how about the computer? Well, the easiest and most supported platform is still the Raspberry Pi 3. For those who don't know, this is a credit card sized computer that can run, for example, Linux. And we will discuss the software in an upcoming episode, but there are plenty of ready-made software solutions for the Raspberry Pi 3. Just remember that if you want to run 4K resolution, then you need a Raspberry Pi 4. But I have to warn you though, that even though the Raspberry Pi 4 can handle 4K, it doesn't necessarily do it in a smooth way. More on that in the next episode. And of course, you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi at all if you don't want to. Depending on the software you're going to run, you could practically use any computer, tablet, or even a mobile phone. Considering the frame, I'm not sure I can give you any good pointers here, since it all comes down to taste and design. Use premium materials if you want the premium look. Simple as that. But try to keep it simple. Wood is a really simple material to work with, and you probably get the best results with that. Now in the next episode, I'm going to show you the exact hardware I'm using for Project Elizabeth. And I think that will help you if you're going to build one yourself. Uh, we will go more in depth, I think. Uh, and from the beginning, this episode and that episode was just one big episode, but it became too long and too boring. Hope this uh, video was helpful for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe and come back soon. This is Hootie, Hootie Style Channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Hootie Style Channel